When we did our last update on the server room, I said that our days of janky solutions were over. It was all proper from here on out. But if you freeze frame, you can see that I had my fingers crossed. Our current live video editing server, new new Wanik, is filled up with 32 four terabyte NVMe SSDs split across four of these liquid Honey Badger carrier cards. All we really cared about at the time was building something that was fast enough to support our 10 plus editors all hitting it at the same time. And it did. In spite of all the hate, it's been running for nearly two years now without missing a beat. And that's despite the fact that our team has nearly doubled in size since then. Did I say without missing a beat? It missed one beat. A couple of months ago, conveniently on the same day the LTT channel got hijacked, one of the drives on one of the carrier cards died, dropping it from the array. Like any other sane person, we set up the server in a RAID configuration that protects us from losing drives. So no biggie. All we should have had to do is swap out the dead drive with a new one, rebuild the array with the parity data, and we should be back to normal. Except there was a massive oversight in our setup. Each SSD is in a carrier card, which is mounted into a PCIe tray, which is inside the server. How do we replace a drive in this thing without taking the whole thing apart? Well, we never documented which SSD is in which carrier card. So even if I tore the entire server apart, I'd have a hell of a time finding the dead one. So the answer is you don't. You just leave it in there and replace it with a mismatched U.2 SSD in one of the empty front bays. That is an awful solution, but at least it's a good transition into how we're going to fix this. <laughs> now, if we weren't crazy, we'd probably reconfigure our current Dell server to have more U.2 slots and then fill those with enterprise drives. But enterprise drives are really expensive and we happen to have 22 of Sabrin's absolutely baller 8 terabyte Gen 4 Plus drives left over from a previous video that were pretty much begging to be used for something like this. But if we just swapped these SSDs in, sure, we'd be faster and we'd have double the capacity, but we would have the same maintenance problem. Enter these. These are M.2 to U.2 adapters from StarTech and IcyDoc. And what they allow us to do is take practically any consumer grade M.2 drive and install it into a hot swappable bay in the front of a server, just like this. It's the best of every solution because we can use cheap consumer SSDs, they're easily serviceable without even powering down the machine, and we get the full performance of each drive instead of only half like we do with the carrier cards. Oh, and you guys get this segue to our sponsor. AMD, get great deals during the Game On AMD event while supplies last on AMD Ryzen processors and AMD Radeon graphics cards, including amazing game bundles for a limited time from now until July 1st, Canada's birthday. Check them out at the link in the description. Even if we had all the parts on hand to turn our current production Dell server into new, new, new Wanik, Wanik 4. It wouldn't really be a good idea because we'd have to do all of this outside of hours. And even fully populated, we would still be eight bays short of fitting all 32 of the M.2 drives. So instead, we're going to use a new server. Specifically, we're going to be using the Gigabyte R282-Z9G. And you might remember this from a previous video that we did on G-RAID, that weird GPU-based NVMe RAID that was wildly fast, but we ultimately didn't use because it, it doesn't verify the data at all. So if you like went in and like hex edited a file and then turned it back on, uh, it, it wouldn't catch that. That's okay. This machine is still perfectly good for software raid with plenty of <laughs> AMD Epic PCIe lanes. So what we're gonna do is build it up and then just do a quick IP swap from new, new, new Wanik to new, 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 new Wanik. No, new, new Wanik to new, new, new Wanik. This has been in mothballs for a while though, so it's time to talk about the config. For CPUs, we've gone with AMD Epic 75F3s. These are third gen Epics, so that's the Milan family of processors. 32 cores each. The F is for high frequency. These will boost up to four gigahertz, meaning that they are perfect for high speed storage applications like this. The bottleneck is going to be our network interface and our application. ZFS, yeah. Long before it will be these <laughs> CPUs and especially long before it'll be those drives. We're also missing a bunch of other essential gear here. We have no network cards. Ah, I got network cards. Ah, network There's cards. There's no RAM, Jake. Catch. There's no coolers. Oh my God, what are you doing? 100 gig These Knicks. are fancy. No, nah, those are ConnectX4, those are old now. 
catch, 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 catch. <laughs> the good news is that these are actually really, really inexpensive eight gig dims that we have too many of to know what to do with. And the reason we're using this is that while normally in a ZFS array, you want a ton of RAM to use as an ARC cache in a high speed NVMe array, your drives are so fast that you're actually adding more overhead by using that cache than you are benefiting from it. That's not to say that there's no need for RAM. You could also use it as a metadata cache, which will help accelerate NVMe storage like this. It just doesn't need a ton of space. Yeah, I suspect it'll probably use between five and 10 gigs. So we're just putting the absolute smallest DIMMs we have to populate all of the memory channels so we get all the speed. Just one DIMM per channel. There's 16 slots per CPU, but that would be two DIMMs per channel. We're just gonna do one. Well, now there's stuff in the slots. Oh, there's lots of stuff in the slots. The stuff is oh. RAM. Yeah, that scoop coming out of here? Ooh. Should be fine. I love how many adapters this server comes with by default. In order to get full PCIe by four operation to all of these front bays here, they basically take every slot in here, every mezzanine card spot, and then convert them to these slimline ports and run them up to the front. And that's in spite of the fact that with a two socket configuration, you get a total of 160 usable PCIe lanes. Oh, uh, okay. Please stop. <laughs> I wouldn't usually bother doing this on like a little consumer CPU, but these things are so huge. Because there's multiple dies under that heat spreader. It's not like traditional CPUs where if you put some thermal compound in the middle, realistically, you've got the hot spots covered. There are lots of hot spots down there. Yeah, and they're very widely spread. Have you seen these? Yeah. They're so cute. Yeah, the epic ones are green. I know they never gave us one until we went to Texas for Genoa. Oh yeah, lab use only. That's awesome. I know. Huh? Oh yeah, those are special ones too. Those are like actually from the lab. Wait, did you steal this? No, no, I mean, sort of. Oh, I should probably start doing this, hey? Oh. Oh! Why have I just been standing here this whole time? Oh, right, I was making fun of him. There is one drawback to using these adapters. <laughs> Every one of our M.2 drives needs to be installed on a sled. Now, you probably noticed we've got two different options for our sleds. This one is from StarTech, and honestly speaking, is probably a little faster to use, but doesn't have any additional cooling for the M.2 drive. This one is from IcyDock, and is a bit more of a bear to deal with, but comes with a large heat sink that will hopefully help with cooling. I tested it, it does make a difference. If you were to do this in your personal computer for whatever reason, or like a home lab where there's not a lot of airflow, you should probably buy these ones. For us, this is gonna be right in the front of a server with tens of thousands of RPM of fan. I wanna do this one. This is way better. Oh, we have to peel like 20 thermal pads. But it's toolless. Nick, he's trying to not promote the screwdriver. No, I want to promote the screwdriver. I have secret screwdriver things to show you that can't go oh, on camera. Oh, secret screwdriver things uh, that can't go on camera? Yeah, they're in my pockets. Let's Take see. your hands out of my pockets, sir. I don't appreciate this. Here, you can show that. Oh, sick. What the hell is that? Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, uh, make sure we don't open too many. Yeah, we can open them. It's fine. Well, yeah, but like our... Um, we're gonna run out of drives here at some point. Oh, actually, we're gonna run out of slots. Let's make sure we don't open too many of them. <laughs> eh. Eh. Yeah, these are not great sleds. Nope. I am so glad the industry has moved on from using screws for these sleds, though. Just put it in there, and it goes a kloop. And then if you want to take it out, you just go kloop. You have to make the noise when you do it, otherwise it doesn't work. See, look. Ah, it's not working. Kloop. Ah, see, magic. These are freaking awesome. You know what's even better? I was looking at this earlier today and I was like, wow, I wonder if they make ones that go into the ruler stick ones, like the E1S drives. Oh, shut up. They do. The other thing I realized on these StarTech ones is you can put a thermal pad between the M.2 and this PCB, which obviously has a bunch of copper, and it lowers the temps like five degrees. But then the icy dock ones come down another three to five degrees after that. Yeah. So the heat sink is definitely more betterer. To be fair, that was with the fans not really spinning that much in the server. I oh. suspect if you were to put a really big load on the server, it would make less of a difference. That's fair. Yeah, we can put the network card in now. It's a Connect X4 100 gig card, which is a bit old now. You can get Connect X6, which has a little bit more acceleration. You can get it in 200 gig capacity. 
I don't have any more ConnectX6 cards, so that's what's going in there for now. Like, to be clear, the, the most our network throughput on Wanic ever gets is like 30 gig, maybe. I mean, that's kind of a lot. Yeah, it's a fair bit. Th three gigabytes a second, it's not bad. What is wrong with you? What do you mean, what Why is wrong with me? Why do you think you drop shit so much? Can I just... No, d well, don't touch it then. Well, I wanted to... Can I just show them what's going to happen? No! Why? It's because a, my it's laptop a framework, you can fall. fix it! I don't want to fix it! Oh, oh that's... Perfectly fine. <laughs> We didn't even really like show off this server. What kind of power supplies are in here? 1600 watts, holy Christ. Here we go. You just taking in the noise? This is double useful. I don't have to hear the server and I don't have to listen to him. Look at all the lights. I don't see any activity on them yet. Can you not? What are these? <laughs> it's like a whole sled. Placeholders, everyone. This is manufactured garbage. See, okay, so if we do four or five wide RAID Z1s, we get 160 oh, terabytes. Oh, that's so much wasted capacity. It's like 40 terabytes of wasted capacity. Just do 10. 10 wide. <sighs> Be a man. I want the toxically Look, masculine you, okay, array. You don't even have a Bugatti. Don't even talk to me. Hacking the mainframe. DFS, so we're gonna turn the arc cache to be metadata only. It's running kind of warm. That's really hot though. Like, wow. Oh, this is gonna be a long command. I'll provide moral support. Um, yeah, go Jake. Oh yeah, Jake. God. Type it, type it's it. Yeah, way come on, Jake. Think about what oh, I'm this doing. is awesome. Jake, you're doing so great. Still That's still 15. 16 gig of 12, 12, 11. It's going down. That's 10. Oh, That's oh. nine. That's eight. Is it possible That's we should eight. have gone with consumer 11, SSDs? 15. Wait, 15. Woo! What is happening? 17. Woo! 18. What is Woo! happening right now? You know, parity calculations are a hell of a drug, especially when you're thing is 10 wide. Wow, that is sucking back some CPU there. 67% usage of 64 high frequency epic cores. 18 gigabytes a second is very fast. That's was 20. It's 20 per second there. Well, this is awesome. And this is only a Q depth of four. I mean, I guess for a sequential load, this is not the most accurate. So here, let's try two threads per drive. It might go a little faster. It's going like 24 and then 18 and then... Seems like it needs a second to settle into how the CPUs want to handle this. It's really not that loud. I know that sounds like a crazy thing to say. Well, it's going, Aah! but he's not wrong. We're probably kind of getting to the limit of ZFS here. I'm impressed though. 20 gigs a second is like very respectable for software RAID. Like our CPU is not at 100%. It's at like 70. So there's still some headroom for other things to run. And these are not even enterprise SSDs. I know, right? I'm How trying many to think of- editors? Yeah, like what kind of workload could we possibly be hitting it with we would need to overwhelm that cache? Yeah. You'd have to be copying from every station red megs at their full transfers because remember, they're not even that fast. And that's assuming Samba could keep up, which it can't. Although what we're going to use for high availability, Wanik, Weka FS, they built their own Samba implementation that has SMB Direct. So the CPU usage from writing files to this file system would be like almost nothing. When's that coming? The server's here. You know what else is here? This message from our sponsor. Raysync, are you tired of slow and inefficient file transfers? Well, have you heard about Raysync? With exceptional speed and efficiency, Raysync can transfer large files with ease. Plus, with unlimited transfer volume and file size, you'll never have to worry about limitations again. But that's not all. Raysync also offers rich features like peer-to-peer -peer transfer, auto file sync, and real-time data backup. And with the ability to sync files of any size, you can rest easy knowing your data is always safe and secure, tucked into its bed, like a cute little data that it is. Need to collaborate with your team? Raysync has got you covered with group folders and real-time audit logs of users and transfers. And with cross-platform compatibility, you can seamlessly transfer files between Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS. That almost feels wrong. So what are you waiting for? Upgrade your file transfer game with Raysync today at the link below. If you guys enjoyed this video, you should probably get some more details on what's changed in our infrastructure in our last server room tour. It's done. It made it five minutes staying above 10 gigs a second the whole time. Sick.